Hello, it's me. We're trying something new today. I had mentioned over on Instagram stories that I was like, you know what, I think I'm gonna try vlogging. I don't know how it's gonna go or if you're gonna like it or not, but I thought I would just give you a sneak peek into little tidbits, tidbits, not pits, tidbits of my day. So this is just kind of over, I guess, today and yesterday and a little bit of the day before because honestly, I kind of forgot. I'm like, how do people remember to do this every single day? I don't have enough interesting things going on every single day to show you guys what I'm doing, but a lot of y'all always ask for just like random recipe ideas or just, I don't know, random lifestyle things. So that's kind of what this video is. We'll see how it goes. If you end up liking it, definitely give this video a thumbs up so I know and I can film some more in the future. Um, this is kind of after filming everything because I realized I didn't even film an intro to come on and say hello. This is a task I've been putting off for way too long and this isn't even all of them. These are just like the main brushes that I rotate through. What I do is I'll pull out several like paddle shader brushes like this and then once these are dirty, instead of washing them right away like I should, I'll just go in and grab three more to rotate through. So then eventually that small pile becomes this pile. But I wanted to share the brush cleaner that I love. I used to always use like the Beauty Blender or what is it? Yeah, Beauty Blender, Blender Soap or whatever. That gets way too expensive and it's a small disc that melts down way too fast. This soap will cost you all of a dollar at Walmart. Sometimes you can find three packs for even cheaper. I found this at HEB on clearance. So it's just a giant thing of laundry soap. I've been using this for years though and never have issues with it being too harsh on my bristles or anything. So what I like to do, that looks kind of gross. I guess that last time I didn't slice it. But what I'll do is go through and just cut off a slice that big and that'll be plenty to wash all of my brushes. So one bar for a dollar literally lasts you forever if you're disgusting like me and put off washing your brushes for this long. I just wanted to give you an example with a super gnarly dirty brush. So this is the before. Finally, they are done. I'm so excited to do my makeup tomorrow with super clean brushes. Also, watching Taylor in the background. Seriously though, it's so many like brushes that I forgot how much I love because they've been sitting dirty and unused. This Hula bronzing brush. I don't know what it is about it. It's just one of my absolute favorite for bronzing. The Real Techniques one is kind of similar, but this one is a little bit longer and floppier. It just does a really good job. So, yay. For clean brushes. All right, so this is nothing fancy by any means, but it's just something that's really quick and easy for lunch. So I have some flatbread, cheese, grape tomatoes, balsamic glaze, I love this stuff. Pesto, this is a really cheap one that I just get from Aldi, but I think it's really good. And then I like to get the rotisserie chickens from Sam's and I just shred them all apart. That way we can use them like in wraps if we do buffalo chicken wraps or these flatbreads. And then Landon likes one that's a little bit cheesier. So I do have some leftover homemade Alfredo. Sometimes I like to go in and caramelize shallots too, but that's just extra effort today that I don't feel like doing. Okay, so after mixing the basil and Alfredo on Landon's, it smells really good. Keegan already ate, so that's why I'm not making him one, although I should probably ask if he does want a second lunch. And here's the thing, I typically hate leftover chicken. Like it just gets this weird smell and taste. I just don't like it. But something about the rotisserie chicken, the texture doesn't get weird and gummy. It just stays tasting good, so I really like it. And then finally, just some cheddar and mozzarella. And then I go in and put the glaze on after. You can put it before if you want, but I don't know. I don't want the glaze warm. I kind of like the mixture of having hot and cold. And I just put these straight on the oven. Sometimes I use a pizza stone, but I like the way that it crisps up whenever you just put it in flat onto the racks. And there you have it. The easiest flatbreads, but they're so good. I love the balsamic glaze just because it adds a little bit of sweetness to the savory flatbread. These are so good and so easy. All right, so we are doing chicken tacos for dinner. So this is just a super simple marinade if you're wanting to do something besides just regular taco seasoning. I like to get one of these small cans of chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. If you can't handle spice, maybe like just 
pull out half of the peppers. A couple garlic cloves. I like to buy my garlic in big bags and then just sit and peel them. I know you can buy them pre-cut or whatever, cleaned like this, but it's something my mom and I always sit together, so I still like to do it. A bunch of cilantro. I have a bell pepper that clearly needs to be used. It's so wrinkled, but it'll be perfect in here. And then just some fresh squeezed orange juice. I'll probably just start with maybe four five five garlic cloves we really like garlic here always include some of the stems of the cilantro too because there's a ton of flavor in that the bell pepper and then Rachel i'm like? just gonna go in and squeeze we might do three oranges it kind of helps neutralize some of the spice too and just adds more flavor to it i really like when you have any sort of sugar on a meat because then when you grill it the way that it chars you get that good sweetness, kind of like with bulgogi or pork tenderloin. This is the consistency of the marinade. I still like to leave a few little chunks in there, but it smells so good. Like you have this really nice smoky, but then still sweetness from the orange juice. So I'm just gonna pour this over the chicken tenderloins and let them marinate. Here's the tenderloins after pulling them off the grill. They smell so good. I wish y'all could smell it through the camera. Obviously the longer that you let them marinate, the deeper and richer the flavor will be. I wish I would have let them sit a little bit longer, but it's already 6.30, so I'm gonna go ahead and slice these up to get ready for the tacos. I topped mine with some roasted corn, more cilantro and guac. You could always go in with some cheese and sour cream if you want, but honestly, the chicken marinade adds so much to the flavor. I sometimes do like to go in and add a little bit of lime juice, but these are so good. I wanted to talk about these wax melts. These are only two bucks at Walmart. I know there's a, I think Better Homes and Garden brand as well. If you like fresh but still cozy scents, this one is so good. I've purchased Scentsy wax melts before too, and I find these to be just as good, if not better. The throw of this one is so yummy. You have a little bit of a citrus note from the orange blossom, but then just like the warm coziness from the musk. So you just get six little cubes in here. This melter or wax burner, I guess, also came from Walmart. It was on rollback for I think seven or $8, but they have a ton of different ones on there. I thought this one was cute, but if you haven't tried any of these yet, highly recommend. All right, so as you can see, my nails and cuticles are definitely looking rough. I cannot find my cuticle trimmers anywhere, so that's another reason I decided to just incorporate this into a vlog rather than doing a dedicated nail video because let's be real, I'm gonna leave that to the professionals. So I feel like I'm pretty good at gel nails just because I've been doing that forever. However, this whole dip powder thing, I am still kind of learning how cute is this little case. It's a little bear. I got this from YesStyle, so I just keep all the little dip powders in here with the system. I had ordered I think it was like some sort of neutral kit I'll go ahead and link the exact one that I got down below and then I just added a few glitters from some gemstone collection I've only used the red one and I think like the pale pink but I think today we maybe we could do like the white with a glitter accent nail so I'm just gonna walk y'all through but I'm telling you now I've only done this three three or four times and I'm still learning. So here we go. The very first step, which I already did, is just wash and sanitize your hands and then buff off any sort of the shine on your nails. I just go in with a classic buffing cube. I got this from Sally Beauty. That's the place to go whenever you're just wanting to get like individual files. They're like 60 to 80 cents. So I did that. Now we're just gonna go in with step one, which is the Pro Base. I like that everything is labeled clearly for you. To be honest, this smells like straight up nail glue or super glue, and it might be just that. So if you spill any on the sides like a little bit of mine leaked and as you can see now it's a pain Ugh! to open I've read several reviews saying that there's certain steps that people prefer more from other systems like that they love the rebel actual powders but that they don't think the base coat and top coat are the best I don't have enough experience yet to say yes or no so I'm just sticking with it just taking pro base one which is step one you just want to get a thin even coat all over your nail make sure you don't get it on the sides because anywhere that this goes the powder is going to stick to so i just kind of like to go through and just clean off any excess first and then dip your nail in at an angle i typically like to have a piece of paper underneath that way i can sift the powder and then just taking a clean fluffy brush wipe off any excess <laughs> So this looks really gritty and flat at first, like flat color wise, but then once you go in with the top coat, it turns so, so pretty. I haven't used this exact color yet. I've only gone in with Ruby. You know what? Now that I see that, 
I kind of want to do it on all my fingernails. Now that I have the polish and the glitter on, this is where you go into step two. This is the activator. So with the activator, you want to go in and get the edges just to kind of cap them and cover the entire nail and let it dry for two minutes. Once you've waited the two minutes, you go in with a 180 grit file, so just the coarser side, and go into the sides and just really buff off any like excess. Like see right here, I got a little bit on my skin instead of my nail. So I'm just gonna file that down and just shape them how I want. This is whenever you go in with your buffing block and you're just gonna smooth everything out. So any of the pieces of glitter, if you did do glitter, that are like sitting up too high, this is whenever you go in and just buff it. Or if areas got like too thick and chunky, you really just want to even out the surface level. But you can already tell, well, I forgot to show. See how thin my nail is on its own, but then with the powder, obviously it adds some thickness on there, but you don't want it to be too thick and chunky where it just looks like you have crazy bubble nails. Here are my nails after buffing and washing them. This is whenever we go in with coat two of step two. So you're gonna apply another coat of this, allow it to dry for a minute, and then we'll go in with step three. So here's the final look at my nails. There's definitely room for improvement, but I don't think I did too bad, especially since I haven't done them in a while. One thing I did notice though, these two nails here where I went in with a third layer of the glitter, which is called citrine. You can really see the yellow tone that came through with it. I went in with a third coat because I wasn't picking up any of the larger glitter pieces. So I would recommend just sticking to two coats if you're wanting to avoid that kind of like yellow tint. But overall, I'm happy with them. And I love that it's just like a quick, instant dry type of finish, but then my nails just feel thicker and this should last quite a while. I got a package from Pixie today, just full of their new retinol jasmine lines. So there's like a retinol oil, a lotion, a toner, an eye cream, a tonic, and a cleanser. So I thought we could give it a go today. I always start off with an oil balm or oil cleanser. The one that I've been using the most for the last like four months now is from 4th Ray Beauty. I'm pretty sure the packaging has changed, but I just have multiple backups. This is just the BFD cleansing oil. So you go in with dry hands and dry face and I just start rubbing everything right off. I know a lot of people like face halos too, but I don't use makeup wipes or anything like that anymore. I do use makeup wipes when I get them as PR to like wipe off swatches, but I haven't bought actual makeup wipes in a really long time. All right, so let me go ahead and get the seal off of this cleanser. I don't think I've ever looked more <laughs> like an egg in my life. That's unfortunate for me. My face is still damp. All I did was use the oil cleanser and water. So now we're going in with the Retinol Jasmine Cleanser, Retinol and Ceramides. It says it's a smoothing cleanser. I have used a couple of other Pixie cleansers in the past. They're, they weren't bad, but I just haven't found one that I've loved so much where I've incorporated it into my routine permanently. Ooh, this one feels really nice and creamy though. It does smell like jasmine. I don't know how I feel about that in a cleanser though. It's not my favorite scent to be honest. I'm definitely more, when it comes to scents, I like like either for super fresh scents in skincare or just it not being scented whatsoever. When it comes to scented skincare though, I do feel like Korean skincare nails it. It just always smells really clean and fresh. I've watched some skincare routines. I just add a little bit of water to my fingers where I notice people put on soap on their face and it's like they instantly wash it off. I'm like, did you even, get it clean enough. I don't like to have any makeup left on my face. It doesn't have quite as much as a lather as some of my other cleansers. I love this one. This is like, I think a Shiseido sister brand called Senka Perfect Whip. It's a Japanese cleanser. It's so, so good. Now I was gonna stick to all just the Pixi products, but I can't skip out on my Laneige cream skin. If I miss this step, I notice a difference in the morning. I just have to have it, so doing a spritz of that all over. I've talked about this a million times. If you're just looking for an amazing moisturizing toner, this stuff is incredible. Okay, now going in with the Pixi Retinol Tonic. I love their Glow Tonic, but this is part of the Retinol Jasmine Flower line. So I thought we would give this a go. I just go in with my hands. You can use a cotton pad if you want. Okay, that one's not too overpowering. All right, next up, it recommends to go in with the overnight retinol oil, warm a few drops in your hands and gently press into skin. Use after cleansing and toning before moisturizing. So you have the bottle and then the dropper. Ooh, I like the blue on this. Drops, that may have been too many, but I wanna go down my neck too. And it says just to warm it up. And then we're just gonna press it. I love 
a good face oil. One of my all-time favorites I talked about in my Sephora VIP recommendations is Honey Grail from Honey, not Honey Moon Glow, Honey Grail from Pharmacy. And then I love their Honey Moon Glow Serum. Okay, that may have been a little bit much, so we'll just go on my hands. Those need moisturizing too. The packaging of this one is super cute. All right, so this is just the Retinol Jasmine Lotion. Here is, oh, just kind of like your typical moisturizer. Make sure we get the neck and chest. I don't know if that retinol is gonna break up whatever leftover self-tanner that I have. All right, so let's just get this all in skin. Oh, it feels so good. The very final product we have to test out is the retinol eye cream. Let's get a little bit, it's gonna be an oil or a cream? Nope, it's a cream. I don't like anything too, too thick though and rich on my under eyes, just because I am super prone to milia. Whatever eye cream I have left though, I do like pressing that <laughs> onto my smile lines. I just decided to all this thing of nail polish down, which I used to have, I think three or four of these bins a long time ago, but I had decluttered so many before we had moved to this house, but we are gonna go see my parents soon. So my mom loves nail polish. I thought I would go through and slim this collection down some, and then it'll be fun just to bring her over some new colors to play with. But yeah, I think we're gonna do that. Maybe watch some YouTube videos. Also disregard the mess going on over there. I'm like decluttering this whole room. And how do we feel? <laughs> about this lovely filming outfit. Jamie's on the bottom, always. Okay, so after I went through all the nail polishes, I decided this would be a better option to keep them in this tray that way they can stand upright and not get weird and separated like they were in that other bin. I did some test swatches to go through because I thought I could get rid of even more. So obviously I could give my mom a lot more of these, but she doesn't wear like dark wine tones like that. She actually loves blues and pinks. She loves glitter polishes and silver. And I'm so excited because I know, where did it go? She loves this brand Bonita that I got a while ago from I don't know where, and I know she loved the silver, so I'm so excited I found some of these for her. Anything that looks close to Cajun Shrimp, she loves those shades too, so I think that's a good assortment. I would definitely give her more from here, but like I said, she doesn't really wear nudes, and I don't think she really wears the neons like this, but I love these. Anytime I get wear these, I get questions. It's from an indie brand called KB Shimmer. She makes great polishes, but her neons are some of my all-time favorites. All right, so I think that is it for this one. Let me know if you guys like these. If you do, I can definitely work on some more. I just didn't want to make this one too long in case you started watching it and you were like, uh, this is absolutely horrible. So yeah, thanks for hanging out. If you'd like to see more, don't forget to subscribe. I'll go ahead and post some of my most recent videos down below if you have some more time and you wanna check those out, I'd appreciate it. But yeah, hope you're having a great day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.